If you like to have high quality vector based titles in Final Cut Pro 7, go ahead and open up the project in motion. You can go ahead and do that by selecting on your clip in the timeline, right click on it, select on send to motion project. Now this will launch this window and there's something important I like to discuss here beforehand. When you're doing this, you're actually creating a motion project and you're going to save your project as a motion project. Now that means that your clip, video clip that you're, you have in your timeline will be attached to that motion project. Now having said that, please keep this in mind. If you're the type of person who's working on a drive that is separate from the machine that you're working on. So uh, let's say you have a Firewire drive or USB drive, a portable drive, and you're going to work from machine to machine, make certain that your motion project that you create at this point is saved on the same drive and the same folder, ideally, as your Final Cut Pro 7 project. So in our case, I'm going to select on Final Cut Projects. You will see here that says Motion Title Project. That's my Final Cut 7 project. I'm going to save my motion project along with that. Or you know what? Even better, I can go to New Folder and create a title folder. And I'll call that title folder because I'm very creative. I'll click on create and you'll see the new folders created named title folder. This motion project will be saved inside this folder named title folder. The name of that project will be motion titles. Click on save. And you will notice that motion 4 has launched and I see my video. When I play the video. I see the delicious vegetables because everyone knows how crazy I am about vegetables. Go ahead and select on the shift key and the letter Z to see the entire clip if it's too large for your canvas. In motion, press play. Again, you'll see your clip playing. And the way this works is I'll select on the letter T on my keyboard or I'll go up here and select on the letter T, select an area, and you'll see a cursor appear in your canvas. Start typing your text. Once you select your text, select on escape key, and that will go ahead and get you out of the typing mode. I have the heads up display selected by default if you do not see it go up to here to where it says HUD on the upper right hand side of your canvas and you'll see here it says heads up display if you want to change the size you'll see here it says size so I'll select on that and you'll see that that go ahead and becomes available for me to manipulate tracking and line spacing if I have more than one line and of course your alignment now you may notice that before it was left and was selected here and then once select center it goes over there that's because this area is where it's centered so I'll go ahead and move this here now the reason I select center is because when I put a behavior to it the behavior typically will start from the, big, the center if it's a center alignment. Other than that, you may see your uh, effects starting or behaviors starting from the left or the right, which is fine if that's your intention. I'm going to go ahead and select on the text where it says Hel Helvetica and in motion four as well as motion five. If you click and drag through these, do not let go of the mouse. You'll see that as you pass through different texts, the text will go ahead and update dynamically. Now, once you've done that, 
Um, if you want to see more options, select the F4 key or simply go to the file browser on the left hand side and select on inspector and you will see different options available there for your titles so here you'll see format style and layout so i'll select on style this will allow me to manipulate my title far more than the heads up display in the heads up display you can select size tracking line spacing and you can also select on this box here will give you the option of selecting different colors for your text you can also again go to the inspector and have more options as i mentioned before once you've done that you can go ahead and select to give that title a behavior so i'll go ahead and select on the library tab select on behaviors and then i'll go to text sequence there i will have folders on the bottom side right left hand side with different behavior folders and if i open those up i will see a great deal of behaviors available for me if I select on one item, you will see it available, or I should say the preview is available on the upper left hand side. So you'll see the different titles, uh, behaviors that are available to you. And of course, that's up to you what you want to use. There is no right or wrong item to utilize. Okay, so if I wish to select on an item, I can drag it to the title. And now if I were to scrub through here, I will see the effect happening on my title. If I wish to add another title, select on the letter T once again. Select on an different area to create your text. And once again, you can change the size of that. Press the escape key. And now your title will be done there. So you'll see our original title with the behavior. And then our second title without a behavior. You can move your second title to wherever you want and again you can go ahead and change the size if you want change the tracking and once again you can change colors and other items on your text as well as going to the inspector and again going to style and go ahead and add additional items to that I'm going to go to the library. Once again, select a behavior. And they don't have to be from the same category. So if I go to a different category, let's say I select this for whatever reason, I'll go ahead and drop that in there. And if I come back here and I scrub through the timeline, you will see that both texts start coming in with different types of effects. You can also add backgrounds here. So if I go to the library, let me close this up, and I will just select on particle emitters you will see different items available to you here. So whatever kind of item you think suits you, you can select on any of these. And of course you can manipulate them in any manner. So let's say I want to use this guy. I can go ahead and drag this in here. And now you'll see that I have this item that you can I can utilize 
in my project. Now, if I want to go ahead and change the order, obviously this should be behind the titles. Press the F5 key, select on your item, and go ahead and move the order in which it is in. So once you do that, you will see whether or not it's in front of or behind your text. So now you'll see that I moved it all the way down, being all the way behind the text. And now if I were to move this here, perhaps make it a little larger, maybe a little longer. And there you go. Not the prettiest thing on earth, but again, it's just an example. So you'll see your background going along with your new text. All right, press F5 to get rid of the layers. So let's say I, that's something that I want to keep. At this point in time, I can go to the file menu. I'll go to save. And I'll go ahead and close motion. So I'll quit motion. Final Cut 7 will come back into view. Once I do that, if I were to scrub through here, you should see your titles. And there it is. So your titles will update in your Final Cut 7 clip. They look great, vector based with a motion background. So you have behaviors that are available to you and you have your background as well with a behavior coming from motion. This is a great way to get excellent 3D animation into Final Cut Pro 7 utilizing motion and again it's a uh, vector based so they look beautiful nice and clean and there you go. Again, once again, keep in mind that your motion project now is attached to your Final Cut 7 project. So make sure you save them both in the same place. By the way, you see this lovely red line up here saying that you need to render. And if I were to press play, you'll see unrendered. If you want to just preview this without having to render, hold your option key and then select the letter P as in Peter or preview. And you will see that it does in fact play without having to render. It does not play in real time, but at least I get to preview what I created without having to sit there for God knows how long to render. Thanks for visiting Making the Real.